Here we have another form of the very same spider web circuit. The difference between this one and the previous video is that the terminals are right here at two adjacent corners. And so we're trying to find the equivalent resistance from A to B going through the circuit this way and this way. And really what it comes down to is this whole rest of the circuit right here is a parallel branch to this resistor right here. Keep in mind that each resistor has value equals to R and we're trying to find the equivalent resistance of this circuit between terminals A and B. So because of the shape and where the terminals are at, there's a different approach here that we used previously. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and redraw the circuit in a way that we can kind of look at it and come up with a good strategy of how to find the equivalent resistance of the circuit. So let's draw it like this. So we have an A and B. So here's A and B. We have one resistor between them with value R. And let's see here, we have these two resistors. Let's, have, let's come straight out with these two. That's these two resistors. Let's now connect them this way with a simple connection. That's where to connect it here. Now I'm going to go up one. Let's see here. All right. So let's go up one. Then we have this resistor right here. I'm going to draw this resistor right there. And I'm going to go down one and take this resistor and draw it right here. Now notice that we have these two resistors that come into the center. I'm going to draw these right here. One and another one down here, two, and then connect those two. So notice that all these are connected right here at the very center, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the center and spread it out like this. All right, so now we have these two resistors, so let's draw those, like that, and like that, and so let's see if we have a candidate for most of these. Let's use our red color here, so that's one, two, three, that's these three resistors. So these three resistors are these three resistors right here. Okay. And then uh, these two right here, take the one at the top and the one at the bottom. That's these two resistors right there. And then we have, let's use brown. These two resistors are those two resistors right here. Okay, so far so good. And then let's take uh, these two resistors right here. That now becomes those two resistors right there. And notice we still have these two and the one at the very bottom. So I'm going to draw it like this. One resistor here, another resistor there, and another one at the very back right there. So these three resistors back here are the very same three resistors. Now I do have to connect it all the way through. And then notice that this connection right here is the same as what I have in the green circle right there. That's still the very same thing. This is the very same circuit drawn very differently. And there's a reason why I drew it very differently. Because what I wanted to point out is that if you look at the very top half of the circuit and the very bottom half of the circuit, they look identical. We have duplicate resistors or matching resistors there. These two, we match those two, we match those two, we match those two. Those are all exactly the same resistor at the top and the bottom. So this is actually a duplicate circuit. One half here, that could fold over to the other one over there, but we're not going to fold it over this time. What we're going to realize is that whatever current flows to this resistor here, let's call that current I1, must be exactly the same as the current over here. How do I know that these two currents are exactly the same? Because it's an exact duplicate shape, and so whatever current flows to the top must exi in exactly the same way must flow to the bottom part of the circuit. I can also say that the current right here to this resistor right here, let's call it I2, must be exactly the same as I2 down there. Because again, there's an exact duplicate shape, and so whatever current must flow through here must flow in the other direction. Because if we turn the, the terminals around and we put a battery on here in the opposite direction, the current will flow in the other direction, and again, it would have to be exactly the same. And if we call this current I3, that means that this has to be exactly the same as I3 at the bottom right there. So since the currents through these two resistors are exactly the same, the current through these two resistors are exactly the same, and the current through these resistors are exactly the same, we then realize that no current, no net current flows across this bridge to the other side. So in other words, these two circuits could actually be broken or removed, and the electrical property of the circuit would be exactly the same since the current flows to those two resistors the same, and, this, and those two resistors is the same as well. All right. So what we can then do is actually remove these circuits, like open them up, like they're not there, 
and now look at a circuit like that and again the electrical properties are no different from this circuit as compared to that circuit so I'm going to completely remove those connections just like that now let's go ahead and find the equivalent resistance of this circuit and as you can see it's simply just solving it from the back to the front just like we do any other type of circuit so the first thing we're going to do is realize we have two equivalent branches here or I should say two parallel branches and this is R and that's 2R so since these two resistors combined are 2R and this one is R to find the equivalent resistance of this back portion right here all we have to do is do the product over the sum method to find this equivalent resistance so R equivalent of these two branches is equal to the product so R plus R is 2R multiply times R over here divided by the sum 2R plus R and so here we get 2R squared divided by 3R and this square cancels out that so this is equal to 2 thirds R so the equivalent resistance of this back two branches right here is equal to 2 thirds R and we're going to redraw the circuit with that new equivalent resistance so coming up here draw the circuit we have A and B we have the single resistor coming through here we have this resistor this way this resistor this way connected this way all right we have the top and the bottom so we have this resistor we have this one down here and we have those two now notice since that's now a single branch I could simply connect those two and call that a single resistor of 2R resistance so this would be this resistor right here we'll call this now 2R all the other ones are still R they haven't changed yet okay now that took care of this and then this whole back set of branches those two branches right here all combined to a single two-thirds R resistor two-thirds R resistor now that looks like a much simpler circuit than we had before again we have those two branches at the end which is like a parallel branch and we can go ahead and solve for the equivalent resistance of that so R equivalent is equal to the product over the sum so the product is 2R times 2 thirds R divided by 2R plus 2 thirds R we'll do a little arithmetic so we have uh, 2 times 2 that would be 4 thirds R squared divided by what's 2R plus 2 thirds R well if I use the common denominator 2R is the same as 6 over 6R and 6 over 6R plus 2 over oh no don't want to go over 6 it's 6 over 3 plus 2 over 3 is 8 over 3R okay again 2R is the same as 6 over 3R and 6 over 3R plus 2 over 3R is 8 over 3R and then of course this cancels out that and we can then say that we have 4 thirds R multiplied times the inverse of this which is 3 over 8 the 3's cancel out the 4 becomes a 1 the 8 becomes a 2 and this becomes 1 half R which means that I can take those two resistors combined and turn them into a single equivalent resistance of a half R so let's read out the circuit now so we still have A and B with a single resistor between them like so we still have those two resistors which are connected like this we still have the resistor at the top we still have the resistor at the bottom and all those resistors are still have have the value R like so and now notice that those two branches combined form a single resistor of a half R one half R now if I realize that these three resistors are on the very same circuit that's therefore a series circuit and I can simply add those together so I have R plus R plus a half R that would be five halves R and so I can now redraw the circuit like this we still have our A and our B terminal with a single resistor between them we still have those two resistors that are connected like this they all have value R and now I have a single branch right there like this with a single equivalent resistance equal to the sum of those three that would be 5 halves R resistor 5 over 2 R all right continuing on we can now simplify these two resistors those are a single branch and equal to 2 R so I can go ahead and redraw that circuit again so I have A and B 
And so I have the single resistor between them with value R. I now can combine those two. Those have value 2R. And then notice I have one more branch coming out over here. And that has value of 5 over 2R. Okay, notice going from A to B now, I can take three paths. I can go through a single resistor here, I can go through this resistor here, or I can go through that resistor there. So in essence, we now have a parallel circuit with three branches, and we have to then solve those as a parallel circuit with three branches to get one equivalent resistance representing all three remaining resistors there. And since there's three of them, we have to use the equation that one over R equivalent is equal to one over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. So those are then the three resistors we have right here. So let's go ahead and plug in those values. So 1 over R equivalent is equal to 1 over the first resistor, which is R, plus 1 over the second resistor, which is 2R, plus 1 over the third resistor, which in this case is 1 over 5R over 2. And of course, the 2 then comes to the numerator, and I go ahead and do that. So 1 over 5 halves R is the same as 2 over 5R. That's the inverse of that. OK, now we have to find the common denominator and add all those up. The common denominator of these would be 10R. So we have 1 over R equivalent is equal to 10 over 10R plus 5 over 10R plus 2 times 2, which would be 4 over 10R. Okay, so now we have 10 plus 5 plus 4, that was 19. So this is equal to 19 over 10R. And now, of course, that's equal to 1 over the R equivalent. So if you now take the inverse of that, we can now say that R equivalent is equal to the inverse of that, which is 10 over 19R. And that would be the one resistor that could replace the entire circuit the way it's drawn here with the terminals A and B right here on the left. So finally, our final equivalent circuit from A to B would be a single resistor in between those two with the value of 10 over 19R. And that's how you solve a spider circuit like that. Again, the key here is to realize because of the symmetry that the current in the top portion of the circuit is exactly the same as the current in the bottom half of the circuit. You can see that the current through these two resistors, those two resistors, and those two resistors has to be exactly the same. So you can actually break the circuit in between, disconnect them from one another like that. So realizing that no current would be exchanged between those branches, and then we have a circuit that is a lot easier to solve simply using our parallel and serious method of solving resistor circuits. And that's how we do that.